In late September of 2014, we arrived in Dobizet, Turkey. John Larson of New Zealand had obtained a permit to do resistivity scanning on the site we believed to be Noah's Ark. Resistivity imaging is complex and has improved greatly with the advent of more powerful computers and resistivity systems. Basically, an electrical charge is used to map underground features based on the electrical resistance of the objects under the earth. In part one, you can see the scans being performed. In order to get a picture of the entire site, 13 scans were done. It took several days to complete the scans. One day when we couldn't work on the site, John stayed in his room all day. He later came out and asked us to meet him in the upstairs dining area. He had managed to get the first 2D images of what was within the boat-shaped site. There on the screen, we saw beneath the surface of the site the lower end bore the shape of a massive, streamlined ship. It showed the empty space where part of the hull was missing, just as Ron Wyatt had documented back in the 80s. It was a couple of years later before John had the software to render the images in 3D, and what the 3D images showed was consistent with that of a ship that had suffered a great deal of damage. After all, if it is Noah's Ark, as we all believe, it is the oldest man-made object on Earth and is impaled on a massive outcrop of rock. The scans clearly showed that this was not a natural object and it looked like a massive shipwreck. As the scans are viewed, each separate color indicates a different electrical resistance of material beneath the ground. The software gives John the ability to filter out certain resistances to focus on similar substances, such as eliminating mud versus denser materials. The portion above ground is only the tip of the iceberg, so to speak. This scan shows the complete length of the arc from the right side, that nearest the visitor's center. The line shows ground level and the extent of the remains below the surface. The rock outcrop is visible in this photo. This is what the ship impaled upon and what held it in place as it slid down the mountainside in a lava flow. The effects of the collision were vividly evident back in 1985 when Ron and his associates did metal detector scans and connected the pattern of readings with tapes. The first thing John wanted to see was the extent of the rock impaling the ship. From simple observation, it looks as if it extended to the middle of the ship, to the center line. But the scans revealed that the rock outcrop itself penetrates to within 8 meters of the center line of the vessel. A top section of this rock had broken off and fallen over to the top surface of the ship, making it appear that the total rock mass is actually much larger and that it cuts into the ship further than it actually does. The scans show that the hull is abruptly cut where the rock intersects with it, and this is consistent with the damage which would be expected if a wooden hulled ship struck a rock and became impaled upon it. The damage has distorted the right side and caused the hull to bulge outward as it is seen today. This makes the present shape of this ship appear to be wider than it really is. Scans show that the top part of the hull on the right side has broken completely away and separated from the main section of the ship and tipped outwards. The intact section of the hull, which includes the left side and the center of the vessel, is seen to be considerably more resistive than the separated section on the right side. This would be expected because in a wooden ship, the amount of damage which the right side has sustained would almost certainly have cracked the hull structure in that area, making it more permeable to water and increasing its conductivity. Here, the right side of the hull shape 
is shown repositioned and moved back into its original shape where it again joins onto the main hull section and is symmetrical to the left side. The packing together of the resistivity contour lines at the boundary between the hull shape and the surrounding material indicates that a sudden change in material properties takes place at this boundary. The material inside the hull shape has a different electrical resistivity compared to the material outside the hull outline, and both of these areas are markedly different from the electrical properties of rock. Looking at the hull shape in three dimensions, the resistivity images show that the front section, which lies beneath the ground, resembles the form of a ship which is streamlined and with the shape of a deep hull design. The resistivity values of the material forming the hull are also the same above the ground as they are beneath. This indicates that the same material makes up the entire hull shape and that this material is relatively impermeable to water. It is a hard substance which has retained its shape. Around the edge of the site are features which Ron believed to be the ribs of the ship. The scans revealed even more encouraging evidence than we could have ever asked for. They showed that the material forming these ribs continued below the ground surface and curved underneath the vessel just as a rib timber would be expected. The electrical resistivity of the material forming the rib was more resistive than the surrounding mud and the level of resistivity did not appear to change with depth. This consistency indicated that the composition of the material forming the rib had not been unevenly saturated with water or decomposed. Instead, the material appears to be still holding its own structure and is relatively impermeable to water. Ron Wyatt used to point on the inner side of the ship's hull to a series of equally spaced protrusions which are projected at 90 degrees from the outer edge of the hull towards the inside of the ship. He believed these were deck joists which once held a floor or ceiling of some type. The scans revealed that these protrusions were of the same resistivity as the apparent rib material. They also revealed that they extended back into the hull and connected directly to the adjacent rib, exactly as Ron believed. Scans show that within the hull shape, there are three distinct flat surfaces of material which extend across the width of the inside of the hull shape. The uppermost surface is seen as a layer of material with a thickness of approximately 3.2 meters, which equals 6 cubits in the exact ancient measurement system. The middle layer measures 4.7 meters in thickness. The height of the lowest deck from the floor to the ceiling measures 7.8 meters, which is exactly 15 ancient cubits. Along the exact center line of the ship, the scans identified an area of much higher resistivity, which is possibly an open cavity. The bottom edge of this cavity is inclined on a 35 degree angle relative to the decks of the ship and slopes downward like a central stairway where it connects the upper, middle, and bottom decks. Halfway down this stairway, at the same level as the floor of the middle deck, the angle of this stairway area flattens out to the same orientation as the middle deck 
forming what appears to be a horizontal landing. The angle of the stairway-shaped area's floor then resumes and descends down towards the floor of the bottom deck. Another area which shows an equally high level of resistivity is positioned on the middle deck and directly next to the central stairway-shaped area which it joins onto. The bottom edge of this area is situated at the same elevation as what has been assumed to be the stairs landing on the middle deck. This area is square-shaped and measures approximately 4 meters in height and a width of 5 meters. It is shaped like a corridor and is oriented at 90 degrees to the stairway shape so that it connects what appears to be the stairway central landing on the middle deck with the outside edge of the left side of the hull. The corridor shape is the only place which penetrates through the side of the hull. Its position in the center of the vessel and leading directly to the central stairway of the ship on the middle deck agrees with the biblical description of a door of the ark. One interesting feature which shows the difference between solid material that is one entire piece versus areas where solid material has been fragmented can be seen in the location of the 1960 dynamite blast. This shows the location of the blast performed on the left side of the ship. The dynamite damage is visible because the material around the dynamite hole has fractured with the blast and is absorbing more water than the surrounding material. This makes the area around the dynamite hole more conductive and shows up on the scans as the red color. These scans conclusively show that this site is not a rock upthrust. It appears to be an object that displays every evidence of being man-made. When the resistivity images were compared to the results of the radar scans performed by Ron Wyatt, it was found that the positions of these structures were in exactly the same locations within the ship. This picture shows the results of the resistivity images which identify these wall structures superimposed upon the results of the radar scans performed by Ron. In 2019, radar scans were again done, which we helped finance but were not present for. They also revealed the presence of straight lines, which were consistent with walls and 90-degree lines consistent with being rooms. We believe this is a ship, a massive ship. It bears the shape of a ship and the features of a ship. It is 6,300 feet up in the mountains of Ararat. The internal features are exactly the dimensions given in the Bible using the ancient cubit of 20.6 inches, later called the Royal Egyptian Cubit. Finding Noah's Ark means nothing if it does not strengthen our faith or lead a non-believer to the knowledge of the truth. The truth that we have a Creator who loves us and wants us to come to Him and be saved by the blood of His Son. But it is written, Eye hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love Him.